Hey, it's nice to have you back here in this new video with the upcoming of the Insta360 X3. This remarks another big milestone for the whole 360 camera industry. And Insta360 defined the X3 as a pocketable 360 action camera. So this is quite unique. This is the first time that the 360 camera was be defined as a true action camera and in this video we're gonna give you a deep dive inside the Insta360 X3 and you will learn almost every technical detail every little experience about X3 in this long video I do hope that you could be patient enough to watch till the end and you will learn a lot on the Insta360 X3 and this is perhaps the deepest dive on the Insta360 X3 by far on our social media. And on my desktop, as you might notice, I have I have placed almost every one of my 360 camera on the desktop. And in the first section of this video, I'd like to share with you a brief history on the 360 camera design. I'm gonna divide into this long video into different sections. So section one, we're gonna look back in the history, especially we're gonna focus on the design and manufacture of 360 camera because the year 2022 remarks an important moment for 360 camera design because some of the 360 camera manufacturer have already immigrated a lot cutting edge technology from our mobile phone, from our mobile platform. In section two, I'm gonna give you a deep dive into the unboxing of the X3 because on the package and the detail, you might have noticed a huge difference compared with the previous One X2. You can clearly see the Insta360 have redefined this X3 from inside out, not just about the name. And the X3 will definitely target as a large group, large audience from action cameras, 360 camera, virtual tour photography. And in section three, we're gonna take a walkthrough on the user interface on the camera because with the X3, now there's a giant touch screen with a standalone interface interaction system. And it also designed with a curvature touch screen with a great feeling vibration feedback. So we're gonna take you through all the brand new design interface. And in section four, we're gonna dive deep into the accessory design for the X3 because there are some exclusive accessory design for X3, such as the X3 Quick Reader, Type-C mic adapter, and even more. And I will also share with you which one of the accessories is still compatible with the current X3. And in the next section, I'm gonna take the X3 uh, outside and capture some sample shot, not just with 36 image, but always active HDR, and most, most importantly, we're going to cover a lot single lens shooting mode because this X3 creatively used a single lens that could deliver up to 4K resolution. And you know, in 360 is famous for their software, for their ease of use, and a very powerful workflow. So I will also share with you the basic Insta360 app that also adds some more feature with the upcoming of X3 and the redefined Insta360 Studio workflow together with X3 that with the help of Studio software we finally unlock the best possible video, audio, and imaging quality from the dual half-inch image sensor. And last but not least, I'll also share with you some positive and negative feedback while deep dive with X3 and I still believe that X3 could be much better in the future with former upgrade and I'm gonna give you my final conclusion on X3. My name is Jun Guo. My YouTube channel is dedicated to 360 photography, video, accessories, and some cutting technology. Now let's get started. You know, for Insta360, they have first launched their consumer level in the year 2018 with the Insta360 One. It is capable to deliver 7K photo, 4K video, and it comes with bully time effect. It was famous for their bully time video GoPro fights back with GoPro Fusion, which is the industry's first 360 camera that come with hyper smooth. The Canon Coolcam also unleashed the Coolcam 4K that is also capable to deliver full sensor readout 
and finally deliver 4K video and crisp audio quality. By that moment, you know, in the year 2019, the Intel 360 unleashed their first generation Intel 360 1X that fights back GoPro Fusion and it delivers 5.7K full sensor without stitch dual 4K image sensor, which is one of the best setting 360 camera on the market. And Insta360 just didn't stop there. In the New Year's Eve of 2020, I remember clearly, they have unleashed the One RS with the, a better bit rate, better video quality, better chipset, and a modular design. And I clearly remember that Hannah Wilson was selected as the role model of the Industry 60 One R. And the One R modular system was proved to be a successful modular system by far in the history. And in October 2020, this One X2 come to the market. X2 has been a lot better from every perspective, except the image sensor. It has the same image sensor with Industry 60 One X, but it is a lot more powerful, such as the spatial audio, the better quality, and the touch screen, robust design, and large battery life. And also with the upcoming of the One RS modular system, they have extended the One R to the next level with a new core module, new lens module, and also the dual one inch image sensor, which we have previously covered on our channel. Before the Intel 360X3, all of this, almost all of the camera designed by Intel 360 performed full sensor readout that could deliver exactly the same resolution on photo and video at the same time. But Ricoh Seda has proved that the IMX586, its image sensor is super powerful, that with the help of quad beta pattern, you could get four times better resolution on the photo while still be capable to deliver 5.7K has 30 FPS 360 video. Cita X really paved the way for the 360 camera design and manufacture. And luckily enough, Intel 360 X3 has similar technology, but it is a lot better from every perspective. For photo, delivers 72 megapixel. For video, 5.7K with active HDR. And even for single image sensor of IMX6, by cropping this image sensor, Creatively, this X3 could deliver 4K resolution from a single lens. So, so to speak, X3 has used the dual half-inch image sensor really smart from every perspective. And this product manager, this product team have a deep understand on the consumer level market. And they have redesigned this camera from inside out, adding a giant screen, increase the size of the sensor, increase the battery, and put more features and better design from every detail. So finally, this X3 remarks one of the best 360 action camera that ever happened to the market. That is the reason why I am so fascinated with X3. So coming next, let's go to the unboxing section and let's take a look at what has been changed, especially in the target group for the X3? First, let's take a very close look at the package and the design of the Insta360 X3 because you might have noticed a lot of great detail. The name of the new camera is Insta360 X3 instead of One X3 because Insta360 One series consists of multiple product line, including the One X, One R, One RS. So. To simplify it and to be more focused and concentrated, the Insta360 has changed their marketing strategy. So the X3 is actually the One X3, the third generation of the 360 camera for Insta360. On the underlying this X3, you might have noticed it is a Pocket 360 action cam. The X3 focus on action scenarios is not a completely 360 camera anymore, and from many design and features, you might have noticed that this 360 camera was designed for action camera scenarios and everyday vlogging scenarios. It is not a conventional 360 cam, but it's just like a hybrid 360 and action camera at the same time, but be more focused on action camera use cases. And it's designed to be small and compact, so in the 360, call it the Pocket 360 
action cam. And under the Insta360 X3, you might have noticed a brand new design for this camera. The, despite the dual fisheye design with bigger image sensor, and now it comes with a multi-touch screen that is much larger compared with the One X2. The One X2, you might have noticed it's a round shape touch screen, but on X3, it looks more like a phone in your hand, and it's capable to deliver stunning 360 imaging quality. The screen and underneath the touch screen, you might have noticed two brand new buttons. This power on this shutter button and the settings button. On the side, you might have noticed the different shooting scenarios for the X3. This is for selfie, vlogging, shooting scenarios. For the rest, the cycling, surfing, motorcycle, and ski. From every perspective, the X3 looks more like an action camera rather than a 360 camera. Because you can use this camera in any different scenarios with different accessories that to push the boundary of your action scenarios to the next level. On the other side, you might have noticed some of the existing feature for the X3. First, it comes with 5.7K 360 capture, but now with bigger image sensor. The 5.7K looks more stunning and interesting compared with the X2. And considering the X3 equipped with dual IMX586, with a single lens, now you get 48 megapixels to play around. So for the single lens, now this X3 is capable to deliver 4K 60 FPS with flow state stabilization. So by cropping the rectangle in the round shape circular fisheye uh, underneath this uh, half inch image sensor. And if you perform full sensor readout for the dual half inch image sensor, you are able to capture 12K multiply 6K. That is the 72 megapixels for 360 photographs. So just like the 4K boost mod, for this X3, it is also possible to deliver an active HDR video by performing staggering HDR on this IMAX 586 image sensor. This is another key feature for the X3, because on the X2, even though you got HDR video capability, but it is based on the multi-frame, it's not the hardware staggering solution. Despite all these killer features, it also comes with an invisible selfie stick, the flow state stabilization, the 360 horizon lock, and it's waterproof up to 10 meters. It also supports voice control and AI-powered editing. Now, with the help of the Insta360 app, it is a complete solution for you to enjoy your 360 content in your phone. On the back, you might notice what's in the box, the camera body, the charging cable, the protection pouch, it looks pretty identical with the X2, a quick start guide, a lens cross. So coming next, let's take a closer look at the design of the X3. And you might have noticed that something, it is even more interesting compared with X3. And you might have also noticed the some of the grid updates compared with X2 as well. And this is the Insta360 X3 I'm holding in my hand. First, it comes with dual half inch image sensor. That is to say, now it is a little bit thicker compared with One X2. From top bottom design, as you can see, it's a little bit thicker compared with X2 because the image sensor is now larger. But for the first glass of the lens, it looks pretty identical compared with X2. So it looks pretty identical. Uh, the X3 and X2 they share a similar design on the frame. It is a, a rubberized, rubberized design frame that is shockproof and it's also comfortable with holding your hand. And it is a joint touch screen. It looks pretty like the three inch diagonal. And you got a multi-touch, you got to see the light preview, you get to control the settings, and you also preview or to play back the video right in this camera body. On the bottom of this touch screen, you have the shutter button, the settings button, and this, this hole was designed to be one of the microphone pickup array in the One X. For the X3, it also comes with four microphone pickup array that support spatial audio capture for your camera. So just like the One X2, the X3 comes with four microphones. One, two, three, and four. So the four pickup pattern is capable to deliver spatial audio. And also in the post process, you can make directional enhancement and also together with the face tracking. 
and you get to see some upgrade in the, in the design. First, you get to see the brand new protection door for the Type-C port. Now it is detachable and it is more elegant, more robust. This one feels much better compared with the One X2 and it is also the Type-C port looks pretty identical with the One X2 and on top, the microphone on the frame, they have brand new design to compare with a simply round hole in the middle. Now it comes with the is now it come with a better design for better sound quality. Battery, it is 1,800 milliamp, slightly bigger compared with X2, and they are not cross compatible, I um, have to say. X, when X2, the, the battery is a little bit longer but thinner than X3, even though they share the same design on the top, but the X3 deep battery is a little bit thicker but shorter at the same time. So that is to say, they are not cross compatible and the X3 battery is a slightly bigger compared with X2. They share the similar baby skin, the surface design, the top and bottom, and they also come with a corner mount thread hole in the bottom with metal reinforcement, and it stays really stable on the desktop. So from every perspective on the industrial design, the X3 is inevitably much better compared with X2 because the designer has listened to the customer's feedback and make every tiny little great upgrade on each one of the design in the detail. On the side, you also see the power button and the quick button, and this one is a brand new speaker design. Compared with X2, it's only a speaker just like this, but this one not only have redesigned from ground up, but also with a very small hole that to make the water to automatically flows when you take the camera outside the water. So the speaker design is better, and you also get to see the, the motorized, the, the shock feedback feeling, just like your phone. So this is definitely more comfortable compared with one next to, and you got to try it on yourself, just like you have a flexible model Android phone that is very detailed vibration feedback. It does does to actually come with a curvature giant screen. So next one, let's take a look at the design and interaction with the camera, because the X3 seems to be a real stand-alone machine for our content creators. And it has a lot of unique design for 360 shot, a single lens, as well as a photo capture. So now let's take a look at the UI of the X3. Okay, coming next, let's dive very deep into the design, the interface, and I would like to explain to every technical detail behind the individual shooting mode inside the Insta360 X3. Because I believe that the Insta360 X3 is a very innovative 360 action camera. It's quite different from any other camera on the market. And to understand each of the genius shooting mode, I have to explain to you in great technical detail to finally help you walk through all the design in, in, in the detail, so to speak. Uh, in the next section, when I share with you some amazing footage, you might get familiar, you might get to know why it is possible with X3 and why it is only impossible on the Insta360 X3. Let's long press the power button to power on the Insta360 X3. You might hear the prompt sound, that is iconic opening sound for the Insta360 camera. But before we really get started, I would like to scroll down, go to settings. I would like to change the language into English so to help you better understand the technical detail. So this giant touch screen, it's a light preview. You get from, to see this remain capacity, remain battery, the current shooting mode, and the icon you can switch back in, in between the, the front and rear lens. So this is quite unique especially when you want to capture 360 photos or videos. So this light preview, you can adjust all of them side by side. And first thing first, let's walk through this basic settings, the UI of this X3. Scroll from top to down, you get to see this icon. Here you can turn off the prompt sound or you can turn it back on. I would like to turn it on because this is iconic for Insta360. Next one, you can turn on the indicator light, this blue light on the front and the back. And you can also turn it off to make it less 
noticeable when you capture the shot in the crown. This one can turn on the voice control if you ever want to capture your amazing moment during action scenarios. But I would rather turn it off. And this one is the quick capture. When you turn on the quick capture, you can press the shutter button or press this Q button aside to quickly power on and start recording at your specific shooting mode. This is a, a very efficient the user interface and uh, it is long been adapted by GoPro and the Insta 36 also catch up with a standalone quick button design on the side. You can turn it on or turn it off. Uh, and I can also lock the screen. You lock the screen, you don't have to worry about um, some mistake on the interaction. We can slide up to unlock, go back to normal. And you can also change the brightness of your touch screen. But for me, personally speaking, I will always turn it to the maximum brightness for the best experience on this camera. But you can turn it down, especially if you want to capture some footage in low light that is best adapt to your ambient light. And next one is you can connect to AirPods and use AirPods as your wireless mic input. But the quality is quite limited considering it's, it's a Bluetooth protocol. And next one, you can Bluetooth remote control this X3 as well, considering the Inter360 has the Rode remote and the GPS remote controller. Both of this remote control, the wireless connect with X3 via Bluetooth protocol. And this one is very interesting audio setting for the first time that the Inter360 engineer has up leveled the lift this option into the front menu because the X3 is not just a 360 or not just an action camera. It is an ideal vlogging camera for our content creators as well. So for vlogging shooting, the audio setting is also very important for the best possible audio quality. And now we have three different options, the direction focus, wind noise reduction, and the stereo. Uh, I normally would turn into stereo to pick up the sound all around in the premium quality. And if you take a closer look at the four ambisonic microphone input, all the four microphones are covered with a specific you know, windproof foam and the shield. So the X3 is much better at the wind noise reduction compared with X2 and make the X3 is, has produced the, the best audio quality from any 360, the, any previous 360 cameras. So this is a giant innovation. This is a giant step forward compared with X2 and this is one of my favorite feature on the X3 as well. Okay, so far so good. But you should notice that for each of the settings, you get to see the different icon. The design and detail is also very detailed. The wind noise reduction and stereo. I will leave in the stereo. And as far as I know, if you set the direction focus, it will follow the front and rear lens in a single lens shooting mode. Okay, so far so good. In the settings, now I'm in the beta test firmware, but uh, it will not change dramatically after the future firmware, but you might have noticed that they will add more features in settings menu as well. Here you can see the USB mode, you can use U disk mode, a quick reader. This is the, the quick reader for X3, because it has a completely redesigned on the locking mechanism. And you can use the quick reader if you turn it on to quick reader action, and you can turn on to Android. It's a, a type C cable to connect with your phone to data transfer via this cable and make it very fast and responsive and it's more reliable compared with the Wi-Fi connection. Although the Wi-Fi connection is, is really fast and responsive, but cable connect is still a little bit faster. And you can control the voice control, the language or the voice command. There's some one, two, three, four, five, five different commands. And you can change the language into the Chinese or English. I do hope they can in the future they add more uh, language support. And for anti-clip flicker, I turn to auto. It depends on where you live in the world. Sometimes it, the, the, the AC, AC power has uh, 50 hertz, or for some the rest of the world, it's around 60 hertz. But I would slide to auto. It will automatically detect this uh, refresh rate. And for the video bit rate, I set to high because I want, always want to achieve the best possible imaging quality. And the video sharpness set to low also to save the quality of your internal footage. And if you ever mount an external microphone, you can 
change the microphone gain all the way from 6 dB all the way down to minus 18 dB. So the minus 6, it is the best settings compared with it's the best match with my Rode Wireless Go system, but it depends on which one of the microphone system you have mounted on your X3. And you can save the battery, you can set auto sleep or auto power off, change the language, and you can even format your SD card, and you can make some gyro calibration, uh, reset to factory default, or you see some certification from this certification all around the world. Uh, but you might have noticed that this X3 support 5 volts, 3 amps input, that is altogether 15 watts fast charging for this camera as well. So this is quite noticeable because the X3 recharge itself faster compared with X2. This is I love about X3 as well. This is a, a, the evidence of the USB power delivery quick charge protocol. Okay, this is a basic recap on the settings menu. Coming next, let's take a look at the individual photo shoot mode or video mode that is fascinate me most on this camera. Here you can see for this camera, it divides into two different sections, the 360 or a single lens. For 360, it works like a conventional 360 camera, dual fisheye structure, but now it's more feature packed. For the single lens, this X3 is now a standard single lens action camera that could also deliver premium quality for video, audio, photo, all around. So for 360 shot, let's take a look at 360 photo. Now we have video, active HDR. This is the first time that the Intel 360 engineer adapt this uh, IMAX 586 from the 4K boost mod into the 360 camera for the first time. This is one of the most exciting new feature that's been packed on the X3. It's much better compared with X2 and it's hardware level staggering HDR technology that definitely push the boundary of the 360 camera by by a lot. Okay, and you also get the time lapse, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, star lapse, burst, interval, and HDR photo and photo. So let's take a look at the video. For the video, now we get a maximum 5.7K at 30 FPS, while at 40 and 4K at 60 FPS. So the two X slow motion. And you also get the auto control or full manual control and the color signs, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and the individual exposure lens by lens. So this is quite unique. And you also switch back into the front and rear lens for the best light preview of your current shooting mode. Next one is Active HDR. Active HDR takes the full advantage of your existing IMX586 to perform staggering HDR technology to get 4K HDR video from each one of the image sensor and stick them together, you finally get 5.7K at 25 or maximum 30 FPS. So this is one of the most exciting new shooting modes that definitely make the Active HDR very accessible to everyone on the market. So definitely give it a try. But for the Active HDR, the only thing you can control is the color temperature. You just cannot control the rest of the feature for the Active HDR. So this is evidence that this camera is equipped with the latest uh, IMX586, which is a very powerful image sensor for the mobile photography. For the time lapse, this is the first time that the X3 could deliver up to 8K resolution at 30fps. This is the first time that the X3 could capture 8K video in the interval mode that it quickly adapt to quickly make the X3 more juicy. And you can also capture the standard 5.7K or 8K. And you can set the interval time to different mode. So it's actually it's also an 8K 360 camera when you capture interval photo for your content. And you also get this time shift. The time shift is speed up by default and the maximum is 5.7K at 30 FPS. The bullet time effect, the maximum frame rate is now 4K at 120. So this is quite unique because for bully time, this chipset only read out the lower half of each image sensor. So by far, it reduces the data amount of the half of the size, but they put it back with double the frame rate. That is the reason why at the bully time you get a maximum at 4K 120. And when you turn down to 
3K, now you get 3K 180. So it is much better compared with X2 because previously we only get 3K at 100 FPS. So with the same frame rate, so now the bullet time is a lot more high quality compared with its predecessor. Or you can slow down the bullet time to uh, even more to even more options. This is a 120 you can slow down to uh, six times slower or even eight times slower to, to give you a more potential in the bullet time effect. Okay, so far so good. And for the loop recording, this X3 works like a dash cam or to capture some unpredictable highlight moment in your life. And the Star Labs, it's a standard Star Labs. You can refer to my previous Star Labs tutorial. The burst capture, the burst capture nine shot in, in the sequence, but the maximum is, is 80 megapixels. 6K multiply 3K. And for interval shooting, you get to capture every shot at the maximum 72 megapixels. So this is, this is quite unique. And more importantly, at your photo, you get a maximum nine shot in bracket and set different AV step. And you're also able to control the settings of each menu. You can always turn on pure shot to perform the pure shot HDR. This is one of the killer feature on the OneRS Duo one inch mod. And now this also be immigrated to the X3 as well. And for the conventional photo mode, uh, you now have two more options. The 72 megapixels you capture at 12K, the long age, and the 6K, the short age. And if you perform the full center readout, you get 72. If you perform quad bear readout, you get maximum 80 megapixels. And the standard 5.7K to 6K uh, photographs from this sensor. And for each one of the lens, you're also able to capture in pure shot, which definitely will push the boundary of your overall imaging quality. And also able to control the shutter speed, ISO, white balance, or size, lens by lens exposure. Or you can always leave the auto, whatever you want. So the, by far, this is a basic recap on the 360 mod, the 360 mode of the Insta360 X3. But what fascinates me most about this camera is a single lens. The single lens is a very innovative design and carefully engineered in the detail. Let's take a look at the single lens. For single lens, we do have limited options, the video, the me mode, loop recording, photo, altogether four different options. But for each one of the options, we do get plenty of technology being packed inside the single lens shooting mode. So finally make perhaps the best single lens action camera on the basis of the 360 camera infrastructure. Let's take a look at the video. The video you have divided into two parts to so this default FOV or the FOV plus. For default FOV, the image sensor, the, the chipset, choose to full center readout the specific section in the middle of the frame that you can get the, the more pixels, more resolution. So for the default FOV, you get up to 4K resolution with the default view of view and in-camera stabilization. So this, this is definitely great. Now at the maximum you get 4K 30 FPS or 4K 25, but if you sacrifice lower down the resolution for a little bit to 3.6K, you get a maximum at 60 FPS. This is definitely unique. And for 2.7K, you also get the 20 at 60 FPS. And you also change the action view, ultra wide or linear. to always set to the widest angle view. And for FOV plus, this the sensor, the this chipset to read out the image sensor in a complete different pipeline. This perform quad bare four pixel in one, the full center readout. At a 4K resolution, it works like the GoPro Max or the, the conventional Insta360 X, X2. And the benefit of this full sensor readout that you get the widest field of view and you can apply this flow state and 360 horizon log in post in the studio software. So this is definitely great. It is a, a flexion model go-to camera in your hand. So considering for single lens, you only get 4K resolution. If you make an internal crop on the basis of the circular fisheye structure, you get maximum at 2.7K at uh, 60 FPS. This is also very fast and fluent 
and you get a brand new unlocked max view. So this wider field of view is around 155 degrees and it has a horizon lock, it has flow state stabilization. So this is definitely great. So definitely give it a try. And it can also change aspect ratio. And it can also, also change this orientation in post. So this is perhaps the most innovative single lens design on this 360 infrastructure. So they play around, it looks like a magic. They play around with the sensor and uh, they just creatively uh, make this single lens shooting more accessible, more high quality. So by far, this is the, the, the basic video shooting mode. The next one is around the Mi mode. The Mi mode works pretty like the, the bullet time. They only capture the lower half of the image sensor to stick them together to get a full circle mathematically. And in that full circle, you get an invisible selfie stick in real time, and you also be able to uh, flow state to stabilize your footage in your menu. And the maximum you get the resolution is 1080 at the maximum 16 FPS. It looks like it is a reframe shot from the uh, 5.7K at the 16 FPS, but now you only get a half of the data rate, so you get the 180. It's like the reframe in real time. You don't have to reform from 360 content. So it's make the Mi mode very accessible, especially the works when you mount your invisible selfie stick. You also get the maximum field of view, ultra wide plus, and more options. Okay, so far so good. You can see the Mi mode works just gorgeous. This is one of the iconic feature on X3. That's the engineer creatively merge the two image sensor into one and creatively use this technique to deliver the Mi mode. This is not the industry the first design, but industry 60 is to make the, the most accessible, uh, most user friendly to uh, compare to any other competitors. And for loop recording, it works pretty like the same as a single lens. Uh, you maximum you get is 4K or F4V plus, it's the same. And for the photo, you get a maximum 9 megapixel or 36 megapixels. It depends on how you read out the image sensor. So if you quad bear 4 in 1 pixel, you get 9 megapixel or perform full center readout, you get 4 times larger, that is 36 megapixels. So far so good. So this is a basic recap. 360 in the single lens shooting mode on the Insta360 X3. This is definitely the most exciting new camera design by Insta360 and to the whole whole industry. That is to make the X3 not just the very best 360 camera in the market, but also the very powerful action camera with a single lens on the 360 infrastructure. So far, so good. Come next, let's take a look at some other designs of, of the Insta360. X3. The Insta360 360 camera product line has a whole system of accessory design. With the upcoming of X3, it also comes with some exclusive accessories such as the quick reader, the Type-C adapter, the cultural mount, and the lens cap. So come next, let's take a look at the exclusive and universal accessory design for the X3 to help you create better content X3. Because here I have several new accessories designed for the X3. It's a mic adapter, the lens cap, the quick reader, and the bullet time cord. The bullet time cord looks pretty identical with the X2, but now with a much better performance, you get to create a much better effect with the same bullet time cord. So the bullet time has never been so amazing for the 360 cameras. So this is a brand new lens cap, a silicon rubber that better protect your X3, just like this. And when you mount it, this rubber lens cap, you can, this is, sometimes it is shockproof and to better protect your dual fisheye lenses because with dual half inch image sensor, so the lens, the lens is really important. And on the other side, you can see, when you mount it, the lens cap, you can also see the speakers and the charging, the charging door, and you can also mount your accessories. So the lens cap doesn't block any of the socket, the speaker, the, the Type-C port, and considering it has a redesign from the SD card slot, 
you are now able to mount this brand new quick reader like never before. It's a very solid and robust. It is a much better design from ground up. And it is really hard to remove the quick reader once you have mounted your accessory on the side of your X3 frame. Uh, things got the same on the brand new mic adapter. It is also co-engineered with uh, Insta360 and Cinova. And you can mount it on your side. You can use your uh, external microphone TRS input and charge your camera at the same time. And needless to say, uh, in our previous video, we have covered this u lensy code shoe design for the 360 cameras for the PT20 and the PT21. So they are now also compatible with X3 because for the X2 and X3, they share the similar frame design, but the X3 is uh, thicker. But on the side, they have exactly the, sh the same curve design. So the PT20, the PT21 is also compatible with X3, and so does the PT20. For the PT20, you can mount the road wires, co receiver, and a specific design shot cable to get a completely invisible microphone for your 360 cameras. If you want to know more about the PD20 and the PD21, I will also cite the link down in the description. This accessory is really important for our 360 and action camera content creators because it completely revolutionizes the way how we enjoy our cameras. And more importantly, you should notice that Insta360 has designed and, and uh, co-engineered a lot of great new accessories such as this one. It comes with Insta360 link, it's a mini tripod, uh, co-engineered with PGY Tech and Insta360. So this is definitely great for the X3 as well. And don't forget the invisible selfie stick, the three meters long, the super long carbon fiber selfie stick. It is compact and small. And this is all purpose tripod. It's a very old tripod designed by Insta360, but it works just like a charm together with the, the invisible selfie stick because it has two sections. It's very stable to place your invisible selfie stick on the ground to capture your content. This is an all-purpose tripod. Uh, the PGY Tech also have co-engineered with the Mantis part, Mantis part, with the Insta360 as well. So this is a really hardcore design, and not everyone needs the Mantis part. But I have to say, the Mantis part is perhaps the best all-in-one tripod design for your content creation. So definitely give it a try. And I will also link down in my description. Insta360 has already created a very unique accessory ecosystem for the 360 action camera like the X3, the first moment they put this camera to the market. So don't forget the accessory. And if you do want to know more, you can refer to my video down in the description. Okay, here I would like to share with you some extra information specific on the Rode Wireless Co. wireless microphone system together with the Insta360 X3. So this is my combo setup. The key idea for this wireless microphone for 360 camera is to take the full advantage of the ULENZ PD20. So the PD20 is a standalone coat shoe mount adapter that you can mount together with X3. And considering the X2 and X3 has similar size and shape, despite an X3 is a little bit thicker. So they are cross compatible. We can use PD20 as an extra coat shoe and mount the Rode Wireless Co receiver at this orientation and use a specific cable, the TRS to TRS, to mount your uh, receiver via mic adapter through this USB C mount into your Insta360 X3. So, to speak, with this combo setup, this wireless microphone is totally invisible in your final shot, and you can still maintain a brilliant audio quality, especially when you're performing some motorcycle that you can control, suppress the wind noise with the wireless microphone system. So, so Insta360 Engineer does provide an excellent solution for a premium wireless microphone audio input for X3 and X2 One RS as well. This is definitely great for the X3 users. And now let's open this camera. I can see that together with the large touch screen, now with some extra uh, mic adapter and this wireless microphone, you regain something really unique. Take a look at this audio volume gain indication on top of the frame. So considering this screen is quite large, 
So this micro level game, this chart is more responsive compared with one RS because it's really large screen. And you can even change the external mic level gain. This one here you can see external mic gain level. I've set to minus 6 dB together with minus 80 dB inside the road wireless go receiver. So this combo setup gave me the best possible audio quality in my shooting scenarios. But you can also optimize on the basis of your shooting content creation and get the best possible audio quality from the road wireless go into your X3. Considering the X3 has a unique 4K 60 FPS single lens shooting mode, and once you have mounted the wireless microphone system to X3 together with a single lens, this combo setup has never been so powerful to capture your everyday vlog crystal clear video and audio quality as well. And it's time to take the X3 outside to capture some sample shot. And I will use 360 shot, 5.7K, uh, Mi mode, active HDR, single lens shooting mode. And I'm gonna use my X3 as my main camera. Also, I'd like to share with you some of my conclusions about X3 in the sample shot footage. The audio you're hearing right now all comes from the Insta360 X3 with an onboard 4 microphone pickup array that is capable to capture spatial audio all around. And I wonder what about the wind noise reduction because I'm riding my scooter on the street. I do hope that uh, you are satisfied with the video and audio quality and now I'm recording at 5.7K at 25 FPS and wearing a mask and on my way back home and you can also evaluate this uh, flow state stabilizer because I'm now ready intentionally driving with S-curve it's around 6 o'clock p.m. the video you're watching at this moment all captured by the Insta360X3 and the audio all comes from this onboard four microphone pickup array that is capable to capture spatial audio all around. And with the brand new design for the uh, wind protection, especially in the left and right microphone, I do hope that this time the X3 could deliver a much better audio quality, especially uh, in the windy condition. You know, I'm now riding my scooter. It's very windy all around X3. So this is an ideal scenario to test out the audio and the video at the same time. And now I am intentionally ride in the S-curve, so you can see the flow state stabilization, this horizon leveling, every advanced stabilization feature that you want to get familiar with X3. I do hope you can get your answer in this test shot footage.
This is a night shot time shift video capture with my Incessor 60 X3. You know, with dual half inch imaging sensor, this camera is very capable in low light scenarios. You can actually use very high ISO to capture time shift that will give you a six times faster acceleration in post. And in the Insta360 Studio software 2022, when you export the footage in the Insta360 Studio software 2022, you can turn on remove grain. And when you turn on this remove grain, the software will use AI to suppress the noise, especially when you capture with a really high ISO. So it doesn't matter you capture with high ISO, you can always suppress the noise in post. And this X3 is very capable, not only in daylight, in high contrast scenarios, but also at low light performance. Impression on the low light performance. has been captured with the Insta360 X3 and with single lens at, at FOV plus option that it can capture super wide angle and maximum 2.7K at 60 FPS. So this is pretty awesome that the fully utilized the 8K image sensor make a circular fisheye crop and inside the circular fisheye but just like an Insta360 Go 2, you make a rectangle crop and perform the real-time st flow state stabilization. And at the same time, you are able to get super wide angle. As you can see, I'm riding my scooter. Uh, it's super wide angle. It's around 150 degrees, super, super wide. And I'm now recording with my Rode Wireless Go microphone system. Uh, though it's very windy outside, you still get amazing audio quality and this is an ideal solution for the cyclist or for the motorcycle adventures. The design philosophy for Insta360 X3 is quite interesting. It fully utilizes the dual IMX586, the dual half-inch image sensor. So, and with a quad bayer pattern, uh, when you perform full sensor readout in quad bayer pattern you get 4K resolution on each one of the fisheye and see them together, you get perhaps the best quality 5.7K at maximum 30 FPS. But I want to ask, but this image sensor is also capable to deliver staggering HDR that every pixel consists of four individual pixel points. So you can perform a hardware level real-time HDR stack and merge to create 4K HDR video and each of the image sensor plane stated together that is the reason why you get active HDR and the first time that it is the first time that active HDR technology has been applied to the uh, 360 camera design. This is pretty awesome that make the HDR video shooting very accessible to the amateur users like you and me. But more importantly, if you only take single image sensor that switch back to the single lens mode seems got a little bit tricky. Uh, you know, with a single image sensor, uh, it has 8,000 multiplied 6,000 pixels, that is an 8K image sensor. So even with internal circular fisheye and make an internal crop on the basis of the circular image circle, you're still capable to get 4K resolution if we perform the full sensor readout at some specific area of the sensor plane. But at the same time, if you perform the at 4K resolution internal circle, and by cropping in like the circle, you also get a 2.7K 
at the maximum 50 or 60 FPS. So this is quite unique, because with a single image plan, not only you are able to capture 4K resolution with a narrower field of view, but you are also capable to capture 2.7K uh, in the full image circle. And for each one of the image sensor, it is a flexible model into 360 Go series cameras, because you can either achieve the best resolution or you can achieve the widest field of view ever on action camera. So the X3 is not just a 360 camera anymore. That is why Intel 360 defined X3 as a 360 action cam. Because for the single lens, I think it is much more powerful if you take this camera as a single lens where you shoot in the front and rear lens you get some amazing quality and some amazing options, frame rate, and the field of view. And that, that's pretty awesome. That is exactly what we want, we've been dreaming about for years, on 360 and action cameras. The footage we've been watching at the moment has been captured with 4K resolution, the 25 FPS on the basis of single lens shooting. Because with single lens shooting, uh, if you narrow down the field of view, you are able to get 4K resolution at the maximum 30 FPS down to 3.6K. You can double the frame rate to the maximum 60 FPS. So this is pretty smart for a single lens on an X3 because uh, you can either get the best possible resolution or you can have a very good compromise in between the frame rate and the resolution as well. You know, the chipset has a maximum data rate for the single image sensor. For the IMAX 5A6, altogether it has 48 megapixels, so it's way too large for full pixel readout at 30 FPS. So the engineer chose to read out a section of the sensor plan while still it's capable to stabilize and generate a 4K resolution. But if you narrow down the area a little bit down to uh, 3.6K, now, now this chipset is just powerful enough to perform the maximum data rate that to generate 3.6K at, at 60 FPS. The double the frame rate, but you have to sacrifice the resolution for a little bit. So this is really clever. This is really clever to take the fully advantage of the half-inch image sensor to create something that has never been possible, has never been possible on 360 camera or a single lens camera. The engineer creatively make a crop in a sensor plan, the double the frame rate that to fully squeeze out the, the juicy, the juicy chipset on the X3. So this is perhaps the best option for action camera users, if you want to get the best frame rate at the same time with a qualified resolution. And this is the magic of the image sensor and the latest mobile image processing technology. So this is pretty awesome. I think X3 really did a great job of delivering such amazing features our customers. Here I do want to share with you a little bit more technical detail behind the single lens shooting mode because it's quite unique and it's a little bit complicated if you ever get your hands on the single lens shooting mode because on default view mode the maximum resolution will be 4K 30 but when you turn to the FOV plus the maximum data rate the maximum resolution will be limited to 2.7K at 60 FPS. So why is that possible? Why we can't get a more resolution if you have a wider field of view? The reason why is that it's because of the architecture of the Intel 360X3. For the X3, the, every one of the image sensor is IMX586 that totally consists of 48 megapixels. And the processing unit for the X3 it's not that powerful to perform full sensor readout to 8K at 30 FPS, not that capable. So you have to sacrifice on the on data rate on the image sensor. It's fine, and at the same time, you should notice for the single circular fisheye, 
the only effective range of the image sensor is right in the middle and the field of view is around 200 degrees. So it's not so natural uh, if you just perform full sensor without. The engineer chose to pre-select only a part of the sensor in the middle of the imaging sensor and perform the maximum dead rate so we get 4K at 30 FPS. When you shot in 4K, the field of view looks pretty identical with the GoPro Hero 10 or 9. And if you lower down the resolution, you sacrifice the resolution that is a crop image sensor even more, you get a double frame rate because the maximum data rate is constant. So that is the reason why if you lower down to 3.6K, you can double the frame rate up to 60 frames per second. But this time you get a little bit less field of view. And things got uh, real tricky on the FOV Plus. On FOV Plus, the MB sensor tried to read out 3K multiplied 3K, the full circle inside the, the circular fisheye. It looks like an Insta360 GO 2 with a large image sensor. And by post flow state stabilization on the app or the software or the studio, you can regain a max view. But this time, considering the circular crop only has 3K resolution at long age, so the maximum resolution will be limited to uh, 2.7K. When you read out the image sensor for a single lens, you can double the frame rate that perform uh, 3K multiplied 3K at 60 FPS by cropping in the full circular fisheye, you finally get the 2.7K at maximum 60 FPS. Just want to give you a bonus technical explanation to help you better understand the design philosophy of the Insta360 X3. But hey, Insta360 engineer, if you are watching this video, I do want to bring back the active HDR on a single lens shooting, because this is really a killer feature for our content creators. And by performing 3K multiply 3K, it is still possible to get active HDR in a circular fisheye. And by cropping in a circular fisheye, uh, we should get 2.7K at most 30 FPS on the basis of active HDR uh, readout algorithm. So to speak, I think technically it is possible to bring back active HDR on a single lens. And active HDR will definitely be another killer feature for the X3, especially on a single lens shooting. You know, I have ever experienced active HDR in a beta test for the single lens, and it works great. And I really hope and it is still possible in the future of the X3. Here I do have some bonus feedback to share with you on the Insta360 X3. You know, nothing is perfect, including X3. Uh, judging from my own experience in current firmware, the, the real-time volume indication light is not that accurate. I am recording the loudness from the indication light tend to be overexposed, but the, the volume, the audio I've been captured with X3 sounds just right. I think in the future, the engineer should reevaluate how you calculate the volume, the loudness, and give us an accurate, an accurate indication on the screen. Or you can add a minus 6 or minus 12 dB marker on the, the volume indication. So I really want the grid lines on the live preview screen. Especially when you capture with a single lens shooting mode, a grid line will help us make better composition, especially when you evaluate the horizon lines while recording with a single lens. You know, the active HDR is tremendous for X3. And especially, you can see in such scenarios, the field dynamic range I really want to capture active HDR, even with a single lens shooting. I know it's really hard to get 4K resolution on the active HDR, but it is possible to get 2.7K and most 30 FPS with active HDR mode. So I do hope in the future you can bring back the feature to X3, have us create better content in high dynamic range with excellent quality, just like the 4K boost mode. It's me mode at 1080, 60 FPS. So this me mode is a very unique shooting mode that reads out the lower half of the image sensor, the dual IMX586. 
so to speak, your selfie stick is was born to be invisible in your final shot. And you can double the frame rate considering the chipset only read out half of the image data compared with the 360 shot. And this Mimo was not designed for selfie vlog. As you can see, uh, it looks a little bit weird when I'm holding a selfie stick like this. For daily vlog shooting, I would like to raise this camera at eye level. But this Mimo is the ideal shooting mode for cycling or ski, some extreme action scenarios that keep constantly focused on the subject itself with invisible selfie stick, doubled frame rate, and 1080 at 60 FPS reframe shot looks exactly the same quality with the reframe capture from 5.7K at 60 FPS. So technically speaking, this is a really smart solution for the action camera scenarios. Uh, a really a breakthrough for the action camera that takes the full advantage of the 360 camera architecture. This is something you can only get with Insta360 X3 and you just cannot get this feature on any other camera. Here I do want to share with you a little bit more information about the Mi mode on the Insta360 X3 because this is a very innovative readout algorithm architecture for 360 cameras. So when you press the shutter button, it will wait around four seconds before it finally starts recording. I hope in the future you can update the full mirror and make this shutter button more responsive. And considering this is a really unique and innovative architecture design for 360 action camera, so I think you should understand the basic technical detail, so to speak, you will not be surprised by the result. And the content you can create with single lens at mid mode is just stunning. Just like a ray frame shot from 5.7K at 60 FPS. Honestly speaking, in the 360, the app is the best application on our mobile platform to fully unleash the power within the X3. So coming next, I would like to share with you my screen capture and take you a deep dive inside this Insta360 app. And I will also share with you some of the new added feature on the Insta360 app that is compatible with X3 and even on the X2, One RS, and One R. The Insta360 app is still the best application on our mobile platform to help you enjoy your 360 camera and the content. And with upcoming of the Insta360 X3 right here, this Insta360 app just got better and it been packed with more features and I believe some of the latest features might make you excited. So come next in a section, I'd like to share with you my screen capture on my iPhone 13 mini, the pink edition. And I'd like to divide this section into two parts. Number one is how to wirelessly control and connect with your X3. And the second, what is the basic workflow for you to better enjoy your 360 camera, not just X3, but the X2 and One RS as well. So first, let's long press, power on the X3. Okay. And this is the Insta360 app. Just click on the app, click. And the first time you might have to hit on OK on your screen, but this is my Second time to connect with my X3, so just let the Insta360 app to join the wireless network that created by the Insta360 X3. Click on join, and it will automatically reconnect with X3, which the app has previously connected. Here you can see first, I'd like to share with you the live preview and control panel on the Insta360 X3. You know, the various shooting mode makes X3 a little bit complicated and sometimes a little bit difficult to understand from my personal perspective. But with the app, with app control, you get a giant screen, you get a beautiful layout. I think you can easily get your hands on X3 and get to know all of the shooting modes inside the Insta360 X3. Now we are in the 360 mode. And you can see this is my uh, studio. Uh, it's a little bit messed up, but it doesn't matter. 
Here you can see you can change different color modes, the standard, vivid, or lock. If you just want to be quick and for social network, you can choose vivid. And for vivid, the color tend to be a little bit oversaturated, but it is a more appealing on social network. But for me, I would rather prefer standard color. And for those of you, the guys you, that's, that's been a professional in the post color grading, you can turn to lock. The lock mode uh, will bring back a little bit more dynamic range from this image sensor. But for me, I love to shot in standard. And you get different resolution options up to 5.7K to 30fps, this dual IMAX 586 image sensor. And you also get up to 4K 60fps that get you the 2x slow motion. Okay, here you can also turn on histogram, and turn on GPS, and to inject the GPS coordinate uh, by your phone. This is how you can live preview, and you can also see the remain battery life and the remain capacity of your SD card. And you also get to control all the settings, auto settings, and the manual settings as well. For video, you can control the shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance, and you can also turn on the individual X folder on the front and rear lenses. And you can also back to normal, back to default. This is how you can control the normal video. If you tap this again, you can go walk through all the shooting mode, the star labs, the burst, interval, HDR photo, and the photo. The first five options was designed for take photographs with X3. Here I'd like to share with you the photo. Well, in the photo menu, by default, it will be captured at 80 megapixel. The 6000K pixel in the long edge, this is a user-friendly format for mobile platform because you can uh, use pure shot and you get to access more feature in the app. But if you want the best possible quality and resolution, you can create a 72 megapixel which has 12K pixel in the long edge that is only editable in post with the Insta360 Studio because it's, the file size is way too large. It's very difficult to mobile platform to fully squeeze out the quality. So first, let me choose 80 megapixel, and now the pure shot has been moved to the format option instead of a standalone icon. So now you can capture either in JPEG or RAW plus JPEG or pure shot. So pure shot is standard format for Inter360 cameras at this moment. Here you can see I have set to auto and the timer you can use up to a 15 seconds countdown. Okay, take the shot. It will automatically capture a photo in my YouTube studio and save really fast into the SD card. But when you shot at 72 megapixel, the shot time and saving time will cost you a little bit more, a little bit more than this 6K resolution. Here you can see the live preview. It will be the pure shot algorithm will be automatically generated from a better quality. Did you see that? Here you can see my studio. It's amazing imaging quality from X3. And I also get the new Credibility Plus option that help you make your final image a little bit more sharp and to make your overall overall looking more crisp and clear. And you can also use Color Plus, Clarity Plus, and you can also adjust all the settings. So this has a complete workflow for your photographs and videos as well. And in the latest Industry Studio, now you get a new feature called Animate. You can animate your videos into different presets. Here you can see it looks pretty like the Vecnos IQ Screen app, but unfortunately, the Vecnos this company has quit the 360 industry, but instead, the industry 60 has learned its core technique and immigrate the IQ Spin the features inside the industry 360 app. Now it makes the overall photo looks more appealing at your fingertip because you can now convert a normal photo into a video and you can export into your social network and share with your friends. So by a single shot, and you recreate with a very fluent video. Okay, so far so good. Now we have different uh, template, and I, as time goes by, so after its future former upgrade, 
and future updates, I think the app will add more template for animated photos. This is pretty cool, and it can export as video uh, up to 1080 at 60 FPS. Pretty awesome. I insist you give it a try if you make you well. I, I mean, in the future, I do hope I can add a key frame just like the icon spin, so and also add some 3D flickers, stickers on the surface on the top of the 360 image to make the overall looking more appealing and more attractive. Okay, so far so good. Okay, back to the control panel. Uh, this is how you can enjoy your photographs. And for HDR photo and the burst capture, it works pretty identical. And here I would like to show the video the time lapse, the full time lapse mode is the first time that Industry City X3 added support for 8K up to 30 FPS. So, this is the first consumer level product for Industry 60 that is capable to capture 8K video. But this time it, it regenerated from a series of 8K photos. It's not real 8K video, but I think it is also great enough. And what fascinates me most about X3 is the active HDR. For the active HDR, you only have limited options like 5.7K, 24, 25, or 60 FPS. And you can only control the white balance. But never mind, you can burn back a lot more detail, especially when you shot the video in very good light condition. And for bullet time, it's the first time that its camera is capable to deliver 4K and 120 FPS or 3K 180 FPS, where you get 3x6 six, six slow motion or, yeah, I mean, with 4K resolution, you are able to get 6x slow motion. I mean, with 4K resolution at 120, you get up to uh, 5 or 4x slow motion, and with 120, you get 6x slow motion. It's pretty, pretty awesome. It's much better compared with the previous X2 or the One RS. And the time shift and loop recording the pretty identical with the previous formula. But here I have the live. In the live it works quite different. In the live you can perform 360 interactive live to your audience. And there's also a reframe live where we can reframe in real time and, and broadcast your current view in reframe normal video. So it is just like reframe in real time and broadcast a specific area of your 360 image to your audience. So it depends on how you use X3, but for me, personally speaking, and on a non-VR platform, the reframe live if my, is recommended. And on the, some specific VR 360 platform live, live platform, you can directly use RTSP protocol to push your live stream into a specific area that supports 360 VR content. Okay, so far so good. This is how you can enjoy your 360 capture about X3. But you know, the X3 was also designed to be an excellent single lens action camera. So here you can see you can select to 120. Now you have switched back to the single lens mode. Well, you can either select the front lens this is the front lens, and you can also switch back to the rear lens. This is how it works. And in the single lens shooting mode, now we have four different options, the photo, the video, me mode, or loop recording. I think the photo mode with a single lens capture, it is capable to deliver, you can see, uh, 6K in the 26 megapixel or nine megapixel with different ratio. 60 by, nine, 60 by 9 square or 9 by 16. It doesn't matter. And you also get the ability to enable pure shot on the basis of the single lens image. Here you can see, uh, let's take a look at whether we can use pure shot on a 6K image. Square. Switch back to the front lens. And you can also set timer, manual, Auto, it doesn't matter, click capture. And you get to see the results, the 26 megapixel. 6K multiply 6K. It does take a little bit more time to save this 
photo and we review in the gallery. As you might have noticed, this app it itself is capable to post process a 6K pure shot image. So for single lens, you don't have to worry about the resolution. It's, the pure shot is always ready for you on your fingertip. And next one, let's take a look at the video. As for the video, things got a little bit more tricky because we do have a lot more options in the video on a single lens shooting mode where you can see in FOV, get ultra wide, action view, wide, and linear. And for linear, I think the linear is the best candidate for selfie vlog. And if you ever want to get the, the widest field of view, ultra wide or action view is your go-to choice. In action view, the, the, the field of view looks pretty similar with the GoPro's super view. Okay, so far so good. And you also get to notice that there's different resolution. It's 4K, 24, 25, or 60. You can also use the horizontal or vertical, the vertical 9 by 16. And if you ever enable 3.6K, you get up to 60 FPS. But you only get the different ratio, uh, which is no more than 30 FPS. And we have to go down to 2.7K, you have the same settings. So the 3.6K, 2.7K, the 120p works pretty identical. And you also get to know if you uh, use ultra wide. And uh, I do hope that you can add the FOV plus that it can create the max view in a post process. So this is how it can work, how it works. And for me mode, the me mode looks pretty awesome. It's flat video, the only capture with lower half of from the rear image sensor. Let's stick them together into a, a single a equivalent, a single image sensor. So this is quite clever because it is an invisible selfie stick by default. And when you use the me mode to capture self, it looks just like you have reframe shot from the 5.7K at 60 FPS, which is buttery smooth. Well, you get uh, up to 180 and 60 FPS, double the frame rate, only half the image data. So you get more benefit from this conventional 5.7K at 30 FPS. The battery smooth and I highly recommend to give it a try. And for loop recording, looks just the same with normal video, but you do have more options on the loop recording capabilities. Okay, so far so good. At different durations. Okay, so this is how you can control your Insta360 X3, the basis of the live preview and the various options straight out on the user interface. To come next, let's take a look at the workflow, the community, and some great new features on the AI Shot Lab. The Inter360 X3 also comes with a quick reader designed specific for X3. So, so the quick reader in X3 is different from the X2 or the One RS because the X3 has a brand new design on the battery, on the, the USB Type C uh, protection door. So, uh, if you want ever enjoy the quick reader workflow, you have to purchase a standalone quick reader design specific for the Insta360 X3. Here I would like to insert my quick reader into my uh, iPhone 13 mini. Insta360 app, we like to communicate with X3 card reader, click on allow, it will open the app. At the same time, you can also use a Wi-Fi to connect to the network. Here in the Explorer menu, you get tutorials, you get for you, and you can also participate in the latest activities to win some gold lotto. That you can use your gold to purchase accessories, even purchase cameras with an extra discount. To so despite my affiliate link, you can also get a bonus, a bonus discount if you ever have win some gold in activities. Well, in the tutorials, now you have a, a series of accessory official tutorials, and it also has a complete guide on the One RS, the basic one inch six edition, or the twin edition. And with the One X2, you also get a lot of tutorials from easy to hard and with shot lab, creative, bullet time, 
and some creator tricks. This is a great place for you to improve yourself and create some bonus tutorials to help you better master your existed or your next 360 camera designed by Insta360. And for you, you can also see some featured content. You can see the best of the week, the summer challenge for photos, for writings. I think the community has a lot of top notch content creators that make the most of the 360 action camera. So this is pretty awesome. And in the activities, you can win a gold. In album menu, you can see you can see the content directly in the quick reader. So I like just want to demonstrate to you the uh, the photo, the 360 video, and a single lens video. Why they are different and what is the differences uh, among the workflow. Okay, this one is for my burst capture, one of the shot. I have recreate with the animated photo feature that you have I have already shared with you about its, its, its capabilities. But unfortunately, if you ever capture with 72 megapixel, this, this app we just cannot, cannot put process such large photos. So if you ever want to enjoy the feature-packed workflow, uh, better capture with 80 megapixel and just play around on the fingertip, recreate, and export, whatever you want. And next one is I'd like to share with you a video. This video was captured with a single lens. A single lens, you can use AI trim or change the aspect ratio. Because you have ever captured with the pro video mode and also add clarity plus. Considering at this pro video mode, you get the max, max view that is over 150 degrees. And it also has horizon lock on the basis of this image. And does not support tracking. And it also use snap track, the face filter, add music, speed up, filters, adjust, freeze. You have a lot of tons of options to play around with a single lens footage. And you can also export uh, as a custom, uh, as the maximum 2.7K at 50 IPS, maximum 75 megabit per second. So this is the the power of the X3 only with a single lens. This is pretty damn awesome. And uh, for 360 video, I do have captured some HDR video on my way back home. Here's one of the test shot. Uh, well, you can use the Snappy Wizard to live rate frame and export the footage directly into your gallery. It takes you no time to export. So this is currently the fastest workflow to ever come across with X3 and it is the most user-friendly workflow for reframe your 360 image. And this one that have 20 seconds, click on export, export the phone album, and it's done. You don't have to wait for the export. Everything happens in real time, but you know, in these scenarios, you do have to sacrifice a little bit on the resolution of your snappy with a reframe in real time. If you ever want to export the, the premium imaging quality, you have to go to the 360 shot and go to edit, add some keyframe and reframe from this 5.7K footage for best possible imaging quality. And for the FOV, you get different options and you also get the conventional view viewfinder mode. But I think the snappy wizard works better than the live viewfinder mode. And also deep track, rotate, you can rotate the, the image and you can even rotate your phone that you unlock the brand new horizontal editing panel for your 360 cameras. And you also get to see in the multi view, the face filter, the, the music, the speed up, adjust. Yeah, this is a complete workflow, the complete video content editing, exporting and sharing platform on a fingertip in all being packed inside Insta360 app. So this one is really powerful and it just works like a charm. So this is how, how you can recreate and reframe shot from the 5.7K video. 
And you do have even more options for the single lens, for 360 shot, for photos. So this is how you can recreate, reframe your shot in this album menu on the basis of the, the editing tools inside Into 13 app. But when you go to story, you have even more possibilities. In the AI shot lab, the engineer constantly updates the various templates for you to better reframe or better edit your 360 or single lens content creatively. So this with the sky swap, the nose mode, the scene labs, the, all of them, I insist you take a look and it's carefully arranged this official tutorials with precise time step. So you can walk through all the all the tutorials with exactly the time step and quickly master your 360 post process with the help of AI. I have ever shared with you Sky Swap and the Nose Mode, which is my top two favorite AI shot lab. You get the features, you get some vlog template, you get some live, travel, sports, you do have different options and create a story on the basis of this flash cut template. So this is also another great feature for the Insta360 cameras and makes this camera very friendly for the amateur users who know almost nothing about the video editing. They just want to share with the best moment to the social platform, but they just don't know how to edit, how to select the best frame. But with the help of AI, everything is possible with Insta360 app and the X3. Well, in this section, you can also go into the ongoing challenges to participate in the challenges and win more gold for your next shopping on the Insta360 uh, website. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I insist you give it a try if it totally blow your mind away. And the settings menu, you can have the post settings and you can also uh, use the help buttons. Well, you can see the help buttons. Uh, it is a specific user guide for you at the specific interface to help you better understand how to creatively use your existing camera together with the Inter360 app. So this is well, very well written with dozens of photos and videos and the content is carefully arranged. So I insist you turn it on and walk through one by one it's help you quickly master your camera. And you can also manage storage on the quick reader and you can update the GPS remote control firmware, add some linear logo, add some shoot on word mark. And in the about menu, you can also update the app and the firmware at the same time. So this is a basic recap on the Insta360 app, especially with the upcoming of the Insta360 X3 some more feature has been packed inside this already most powerful application on your fingertip. That will definitely make your existing Inter360 camera more powerful and make this ecosystem, the whole ecosystem, a lot stronger as time goes by. So I believe Inter360 X3 will be and will definitely be one of the most top setting 360 action camera on the market so far. The quality about X3 is very juicy. So to fully unlock the AMG quality behind X3, a better use Insta360 Studio PC or Mac, the desktop workflow. So in the next section, I would like to share with you my screen grab that will share with you how to unleash the full potential about X3 with desktop workflow. Insta360 Studio 2022 is the important part of the simple workflow for the Insta360 X3. So in this section, let's dive deep into the studio software. With the latest 4.6, 4. Uh, you get to know all the capabilities that behind the Insta360 X3. Okay, first thing first, let's take a look at this active HDR shot that's been captured with my uh, X3. Here I can see you can add different, different uh, key points and uh, in, in the left column, this is the, the management section for the studio software, where you can see the camera files, you can see your favorite files, and you can also see the export, the rendering queue. And in the preview menu, you can set different assigning and disassigning criteria for 
uh, on the basis of camera size, type, and date. And in this section, we do have different preview mode. This is a preview thumbnail, and this is the simple, simple thumbnail. And here is the list view. Well, I can add, and you can add stars on each one of the footage. Okay, here you can see uh, in this preview thumbnail view, you can preview your video just like that. Did you see that? When hovering your, your mouse on the top of the thumbnail, you get to see a mini timeline indication indicating that you are your files. The video files, well, you can also preview just like this. Editing menu, editing panel, this is two different layout. This one was designed for reframe. For reframe, you can add different different keyframes and you can set the specific FOV, the parameters for this shot. And this is 360 view, the design specific for you to make the rough edit on the 360 content. Uh, I would rather use reframe because reframe is why we choose 360 cameras and reframe as a normal shot. And on this, on the line, this one, you can see the timeline. You can scroll down to different, different moment in your in your video, and you also get to set the start, trim the start, or trim the the end. Or you can also change the player volume. For some of the section, you get to see the hotkey. For example, this one is. For example, you get to see some. Uh, import command plus O and it's command plus left column and command plus right column and you can also add the keyframe by press command plus K and you can deep track you can deep track one of your subject and you can also add some motion blur add some time shift speed up your footage at the same time add some more motion blur and you do have different ratio options to square 16 by 9 all the way up to 2.35 over 1. This is 20, this is 21 over 9. This wide aspect ratio to make your footage look more cinematic. Do you see that? And you also get to screen grab. This is a snapshot from one of your footage, and you get to see the full screen view. And this is an edit export, start export, and you add this into the end rendering queue. On the right side, you get to see the stabilization type, uh, flow state, direction lock, for example, in this section. If you don't turn on direction lock, you can see as I move around, I'm not always in the middle of the frame. You know, you see that. But the relationship, but I con but considering the X3, I stay exactly at the same position compared to the X3. So if I turn on direction lock, you can see as I move around, I am always in the middle of the frame. So that is to say, I only have to add a single keyframe and I'm still always in the middle of the frame. This is the magic of direction lock. The direction lock will automatically follow the, the pitch angle of your movement. If you turn it off, it will compensate all of the, your pitch and roll angle. So it will not always follow the subject in the middle of the frame. So it depends on uh, shooting scenarios, but in this case, I would love to use the direction lock. And here you can see the stitching do have different options. So sticky lens guard, dive case, and the customized parameters. And you also see the optical flow, dynamic stitch. For videos, I prefer optical flow. For photo, I prefer dynamic stitch. And you can also calibrate on the basis of your single frame. For example, in these scenarios, and you see that, as you can see, the stitching quality is not the best possible, especially in the nadir part. So I can stitch, I can make a specific calibration on the basis of this frame to make my stitch looks better for this scenario. This is how to calibrate uh, on the basis of the single frame. Okay, so far so good. And next one is to uh, add some more image processing, this more options this time. Uh, we do have some more options such as the color plus, the new added clarity plus. The clarity plus will automatically add some more sharpness on the basis of your subject. It's very smart. It's not 
sharp all of the images, but only sharp on this, some specific areas to make your footage overall looks more crisp and clear. It is quite different from at sharpness uh, in, in the camera or in the post-process software. When you add some color clarity plus, you can see it doesn't overshop the cloud, it doesn't overshop the blue sky, but it does add a little bit more sharpness on the trees, the leaves, and on my face. So I would rather use Clarity Plus if you want to get the best possible overall looking in your footage. And you can also choose to add more post process on the audio. You can use voice focus or you can simply add noise reduction. But for me personally, I prefer to turn it off to get the best overall audio quality and make some more precise post process in Premiere or Audio Ration. Well, in this section, you can add logos, uh, different logos. Well, you can also place in different position. And this one, you can add a different management. For example, I have a project one. I can see I have already added three different keyframes on each of the frame. I can also control FOV and the distortion control. This is really powerful to control each one of your frame. And this is a file pr property. You see the... Uh, the file size, the HDR video is active HDR, stereo pick and pattern, and the overall bit rate. So this so far so good. This is how you can capture the 360 shot and reframe with the studio software. And next one, let's take a look at the FOV Plus. When we capture with the 4K resolution, you know. Okay, come next. Let's take a look at uh, the the pro stabilization on a single frame. A single lens, when you add to FOV Plus, you get to see the maximum 2.7K overall in this footage. footage. Well, you get a square uh, 2080, the square video, where you can recreate and reframe as a 2.7K at a maximum 60 or 50 frames per second. So this is the magic of a single lens shooting for the best overall, the but the widest angle of view. Well, in this section, you can have uh, FPV stabilization that will smooth the rolling angle of your shot. And for the FOV option, we now have unlocked the max view. The max view tend to give you the widest field of view that is literally captured around, you know, uh, 150, 55 degrees. As you can see, this is super wide. And this is only the camera that is capable to deliver such wide field of view. That is to say, that is the reason why they call it a max view instead of ultra wide plus. So ultra wide plus is, is not that wide, but when you turn on max view, this is the only option you can get in the FOV plus option when you turn on on your camera body. And even in the max view, you can you can remove the distortion or add distortion, uh, whatever you want. And you also have can add Clarity Plus, the Color Plus, to make your overall looking more beautiful. But you should notice that you cannot add Color Plus and Clarity Plus at the same time. It's quite interesting. And here you can see you can also add some projection management. And if you rotate the screen, you can also reframe the shot. Reframe a little bit, because it has a circular fish eye that is uh, have plenty of space to make some crop in post. So this is how you get the option with uh, a single lens at FOV plus option. It's post post flow state. But if you turn on this real time flow state in the camera, now you can directly capture at a 4K resolution. That is that is really powerful. Do you see that? Let's take a look at. This is a capture. This is a footage being captured straight out from the camera at 4K resolution. As you can see, the image looks really sharp. The quality looks pretty awesome. It's 4K to 25 FPS. And the only thing you can get is to add some clarity or color plus. And if you lower down the resolution for a little bit to down to 3.6K, 3.6K at 50 FPS, we will also get amazing imaging quality but at the same time you get to know 
a narrower field of view, but double the frame rate. This is buttery smooth. The footage looks buttery smooth. So this is pretty awesome. And this is really smart for the Inter360 camera team to design such form factor. And did you see that? The footage looks really sharp. The footage looks really sharp. Do you see that? The quality looks much better compared with the FOV Plus, but it's not, it doesn't have the max view and everything, the flow state, in camera flow state. So you don't have more options and you can use the footage straight out from the camera. So this is how you can do with a single lens shooting. Well, for the photo capability, uh, now we have pure shot straight out from the camera. And you can turn around the 72 megapixel, 12K multiply 6K in this in the studio software, where you get 72 megapixels. And you can also shot at 80 megapixels, and you can capture in burst shot. In burst shot, you can cycle through different shots. And this one, I have turned around the pure shot, and we automatically synthesizing the pure shot HDR photo for me. ISP file is JPEG format. The JPEG format, you don't have that much space for post process, but once you turn to the pure shot, the pure shot looks pretty awesome. You generate a pure shot, and you get to see 72 megapixel with pure shot AI algorithm dramatically increase the imaging quality. But the post process does take a little while for the PC or Mac to finalize the detail in your shot. Here you can see the motion blur effect. And if you ever generate a pure shot, you can see the huge difference in between the before and after. This is this is before, and this is after. The huge difference looks pretty much more detailed, and the color looks more vivid. And look at how how crisp clear the 72 megapixels. It looks pretty damn awesome. You get to see this 12K multiply 6K. And you have more options. You can have dynamic stage. For dynamic stage, I think the photo quality looks better. Did you see that? Optical flow, dynamic stage, and you can also calibrate on the basis of the single frame. Did you see that? Yes, I think this one so far so good. And you can export directly to your photo and you can make more post-process on the basis of the single high-quality RAW file. So this is how you can do with your photo, your 360 video, and your single lens shooting mode. So the studio software will finally unlock all the secret capability behind X3. This definitely make X3 one of the most successful camera on the history. X3 is actually the best camera on the both worlds for video, for 360, for action camera, and even for photographs. So this is a basic recap on the CD workflow about X3. You can see it's very simple, intuitive, and it is very friendly to our customers. And more importantly, it's free of charge. I think it's time to talk about the photographical capability of Intel 360 X3, because for the spec itself, it's quite amazing. You captured 12K multiply, 6K resolution, 72 megapixels. I think it's pretty awesome. It's one of the highest spec sheet in the 360 camera that equipped with dual fisher image sensor. So how do we evaluate the real potential, the real quality about the photography of the Insta360 X3? I'm gonna divide this part into two different sections. So one of them, I would like to explore the real potential in the virtual tour shooting scenarios. I mean the imaging quality, the basic experience, the workflow, and the overall imaging quality after post-process. And the second part is I would like to use Inter360 X3 in my everyday content creation for my hiking, traveling, vlogging, everyday stuff, everyday life. I just want to know whether the imaging quality is good enough, whether it is useful enough, and whether it is creative and innovative enough for me to make better content 
and to share my happiness on my social network. Coming next, I would like to take my Insta360 X3 into some virtual tour shooting scenarios. I just want to explore the real photographs potential of the dual half inch image sensor. Just want to share with you the, my shooting environment and my shooting setup, especially my combo setup with Insta360 X3. As you can see, this obviously this is a high dynamic range situation. Uh, considering the weather was not that great, so I have put on the curtain. So because there's just not that much detail, that that is not that interesting for the outside. Uh, but even I have put on the curtain, it's still overexposed co compared to the interior shot. And this is my combo setup, the uh, Insta360 3 meters invisible selfie stick, the carbon fiber, the carbon fiber material. And I also have a counterweight on the bottom, this counterweight and the mini tripod. So the counterweight, the balance, the whole setup, and the guarantee this camera is safe. It will not fall off and scratch the lens. And I have turned on all the lights. You can see the light band. And for the color temperature, it's a little bit warm for the interior shot. You know, to capture a 72 megapixel or to capture a series of HDR bracket, the camera will capture a lot of data, so I use Quick Reader and a UHS-2 standard fast micro SD card, make my overall workflow more efficient and less time consuming. So this is my basic combo setup. And next one, I would like to share with you how I have placed my basic settings on the X3 uh, before I press the shutter button. I normally switch to the HDR shooting mode. Unfortunately, in the current firmware, you just cannot capture 72 megapixel in the raw DNG format in HDR mode. So to speak, in the HDR mode, you only get to select pure shot, out, uh, white balance, uh, auto bracket number, and the EV step. So to save that more data and space, I choose normally choose seven shot in bracket and with one step exporter as a step. But I just cannot capture 72 megapixels. But if you are satisfied with the 6K resolution, I think this HDR mode is still useful for the virtual tour photographs. And my second approach is to manually bracket with 72 megapixel in a single photo mode, which I will show you on my screen capture later on. Here is a to speak. Uh, I will select with the 10 second countdown and capture this shot with the HDR stack and merge the seven shot in raw DNG format. To, to, okay, next one, I would like to share with you my screen capture and show you how to manually bracket with 72 megapixels in the single photo mode. And here in the light preview, I will turn to the photo mode because only in photo mode we are able to capture 72 megapixels. Photo mode yeah, can switch back to the 72 megapixel, which create 12K in long edge and 6K in short edge. It takes the full advantage of the IMAX 586 image sensor. And here to see in the manual shooting mode, I have set ISO and lock to the 100 because for HDR stack and merge, the better capture every shot with the lowest ISO possible to guarantee the amazing imaging quality after HDR stack and merge. Here to speak, for manual exposure, first shot, I will exposure to, to the highlight. Well, ISO 100 and the white balance, I would love to set to uh, 4,500K because I want to maintain a constant color temperature during my HDR shooting. Here to speak, a uh, hundred second, take this shot. The second one, I will uh, elevate the exposure by a, a stop to 15 seconds. I can see the highlight areas tend to be a little bit overexposed, but it's okay because we will capture a serious shot uh, with different exposure settings. And capture a single shot in photo mode with 72 megapixels does take a little bit more time. It will take around three to four seconds to save a DNG format into your micro SD card. The next one, we elevate the exporter to 25, 25, one over 25 seconds. It takes another shot. Oh, now altogether we have three shots in the sequence. And now we can see the 
highlight area has been exposed, overexposed to get the more detail in this dark area. So altogether now we have captured altogether five images and we are going to need the last one to overexpose to expose for the dark area. So for uh, the second half second, I would like to shot in half second to expose for the dark area. And by shooting the six shot in this HDR sequence in the post process, I can manually stack and merge and stitch the photographs. And I can also create a template for the Insta360 X3. And with the help of the PTW Pro, everything could be done automatically with the batch processing workflow. So far so good. This is how we can capture the maximum imaging quality with X3 in virtual tour shooting scenarios. It's around 8 o'clock p.m. You know, the night side looks pretty stunning. And this is the ideal place for taking 360 photographs because there's point of interest all around these places from top to bottom, uh, all around 360 degrees. It's really hard, it's really challenge to capture a single frame for conventional mirrorless or DSLR. But this is the ideal place. I'm now standing in the middle of the point of interest. So I'm standing in the exactly the right point of view for 360 cameras. And this is the ideal place for X3 to challenge the low light scenarios. And at the same time, with precise control and exposure, I think we can actually capture stunning quality photographs with 72 megapixels and a lot more reframe potentials. And you can clearly see the details in the cloud. It's just after a light rain, there's a reflections all around, including the reflection on the light in the tunnel. On the far side, you can see the RGB light on the tunnel. Everything looks around. I think everything, everything looks pretty stunning. This is the place where I have to capture 360 photographs. Okay, first, I'd like to capture the shot with pure shot at 80 megapixels because I really want to see the live preview and the the pure shot directly in the app software. Because with 72 megapixels, it just cannot generate pure shot in the app at this moment. But capture when you capture with 80 megapixel photos, you can see the the capture time, the save the saving time is very short. And you can straight out preview the pure shot in the playback menu. As you might notice, this is uh, the unedited JPEG format, but when you render with pure shot, things got very interesting. And you can also add Insta Panel or Tiny Planet directly in the app, generate some amazing effect. And you can even shot with animated photos. I've used a manual exporter with ISO 125, and I switched back to 72 megapixel and capture a real premium quality photographs uh, with my selfie stick, long exposure shot and the studio software, the pure shot technology. So this is really stunning and capture and save time does take a little bit more time compared with the 80 megapixels. After this night shot, I have ordered a cup of Costco Palladian in a domestic bar. Here you can see he was shaking for me. And the Costco Palladian looks pretty beautiful in the cocktail cup. And in this scenario, it's also a high dynamic range situation. And I use Insta360 X3 as my main 360 camera to capture the very best emotional feeling when I was enjoying this cosmopolitan. Well, he was carefully arranged my uh, cosmopolitan and later you can see how I have arranged these photographs and let you see my final result with X3 on this specific place.
The X-S3 is the best camera in the three worlds. So for virtual tour photos, uh, for the action camera users, for 360 camera lovers, so everyone inside this target group gonna be crazy about Insta360 X3 because I have never seen such 360 camera on the market that could be so capable in photo or video and action camera, audio quality, accessory design, ease of use, the powerful workflow. It is the best camera from every perspective. So honestly speaking, I think X3 is going to be one of the best selling 360 action camera on history. And I really hope that Insta360 could keep updating the firmware that deliver even more feature to our customers. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to thumb up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. So cheers on Insta360 for Unleash the X3 to the market. Stay safe, see you next time. Bye.